food is a big part of any culture, but especially for Puerto Ricans. From the famous arroz con gandules, their delicious mofongo, to the parcha, or grapefruit ice cream sold in almost every corner. The flavors and traditions are everywhere, and who can turn down fresh coconut water? El coco hace pelo Although these are all mouth-watering, I was told that for real island cuisine, you go to La Ruta de Lechon in Guavate. Translation, the pork highway. The road is lined with lechoneras, mom and pop shops that sell everything from cuerito, fried pork skin, so good. to pork intestines. Yes, pork intestines. We stop at one of the most popular spots on the street, Los Pinos. As you know, in, in the States, when they, um, everyone's on a diet always, no? Mm -hmm. and they say, don't eat pork, don't eat fat. What's your response to that? <laughs> well, for me, you know, look at me, I, I eat it well. Tommy takes good care of the swine here. Can you take me to where you start the, the whole process with, yeah. with the pigs? Yes. Let's go. <laughs> We got this giant, you know, fridge. Can we, can we come in? Oh, que frío. It's really cold. How old is this one? Uh, this is one week. One week? Yeah. So this is it, right? Yeah. I don't know. Some appetites might shrink here, but this is how the sausage is made, and the intestines, and so much more. This is not for vegetarians, right? No, <laughs> actually no. So you can actually eat everything? Uh, yeah, everything. The tongue? The tongue too. The ears? The ears, yeah. Eyes? Eyes. You can eat the eyes? Yeah, yeah. actually the brain. The we, brain? We in Puerto Rico, they use, use the brain. Uh -huh. We eat and they scramble and then they eat it. Are they good? Yeah. How about the nose? Yeah, so actually they, they eat it. Is it good? But they roast it, yeah. Roast it? Yeah. How about the, uh, the inside of the pork? Yeah, yeah, the inside. That's what we call gandinga. Gandinga? Yeah. Gandinga, pig intestines. And morcilla, blood sausage. People actually pay money to eat all of this. So it's almost like a fight with it. Yeah. This is grease. Yeah, that's, that's grease. Okay, so when people eat grease and fat, this is what they're eating. Yeah. This is the, uh, the tongue, yeah, the I'm tongue. assuming, right? Mm -hmm. This is the tongue. And are you sure it's good? Mm -hmm. How do you eat it? You fry it? Yeah, I fry it. You want a little bit of fat and tongue? <laughs> Appetizing, eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever eat meat again in my life. Now from the butcher's table to the dinner table. So it's really quite a meal here in Puerto Rico. You, you'll never be hungry here. Here's the intestines. Remember what we show you? Okay, so here they are. And then uh, morcilla. It's a uh, blood sausage with a little bit of uh, rice. Tasty, I don't know. Then, um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna try this one. Remember the tongue, tongue and heart. It's here, it's just for uh, adventurous people. Uh, pork skin, that's my favorite, the best part of it. Mm. And then, pastelitos, they call it tamales. You, you, you have them in almost every Latin American country. They're pretty good, a little bit of sweet. And just when I thought I couldn't try anything else, they insisted I taste the traditional drink they called pitorro. By the way, it's illegal. Cuénteme, ¿qué es el pitorro? What's the pitorro? Pitorro es una bebida de alcohol. It's alcohol. ¿Qué porcentaje de alcohol? Sobre un 40%. It's over 40% of alcohol. ¿Dónde lo hacen? Where do you make it? It's homemade. It's homemade. It's homemade. No le paga el litro de cubierto, por eso es It's homemade. And it's illegal. So that's why we're going to drink it. All right. So just like that? Y este que es de fruta. Este es de fruta. Sí. This is alcohol fruit. with fruit. fruit. Homemade. Sí, homemade. Es fuerte. Es fuerte, ¿eh? What would happen if the police come right now? 
Muy buena tu run, tenemos que ir corriendo. Como no le pagamos al gobierno los yeah. arbitrios, las yeah. contribuciones, pues no lo podemos vender. Okay. Lo podemos el uso comercial so, de la casa. Solamente we can drink it, but we can, but he can sell it. All okay. right. Buried and fermented for months, Pitorro is usually dug up during the holiday season. It's a true underground cocktail. Es más fuerte que el tequila, it's stronger than tequila. It was an intense afternoon of pork, salud, and liquor. I love the fact that there are still lechoneras. I think it's really interesting to even go and like see how this happens, how to kill a pig and how to roast it. And so I don't think, you know, that I would be against tourists coming to visit the island and seeing that. I think what's important is that tourists get a variety of things so that we understand that Puerto Rican food is not just bacalaitos and lechon. Tara Rodriguez Besosa is making sure people here have a variety of things to eat. We do suffer from diabetes here big time and hypertension and we eat a lot of greasy foods and we are not healthy. But there's also a whole bunch of other options, right? That's why she decided to move back to her homeland after studying architecture in New York and living in the city for a couple of years. I love to be here. I'm very happy that I moved out of the city. I'm very happy to be a part of a culture that understands that it's really important to work hard and play hard. She turned a garage space in Santurce into El Departamento de la Comida, the Department of Food. It might sound like a government office, but it couldn't be more different. This is the produce of the people. We're the food dealer. We're, you know, that resource area or resource space where farmers get to sell these products, where consumers get to find them, and then we do all the things that are in between. Organic vegetables, fruits, and custom dishes are served here. And when you're done eating, you can even get a massage. Who wouldn't love to be here all day? <laughs> or drink cabatida, work on your next masterpiece, or just hang out. It's also our experimentation station, right? We have a garden outside, we grow from, you know, some of the seeds, we bring stuff from our own houses, and we just experiment. Like right now we have toilets that we found on the street and we're showing how you can grow stuff in toilets. Cooking herbs, of course. We want to spend the time and energy on preparing really good food, on getting this food in the best way possible. Not a lot of kitchens in Puerto Rico are doing that, and we want to prove from the bottom up that we are able to do that and kind of be an example for others, right? It takes guts. Tara had a simple reason for leaving the corporate world for this upstart project. We are living on an island that has a huge economical and even political crisis, and it's been happening for years now. I do not want to sit around and wait for anybody to help me with anything. We just decided to put it into our own hands. It was just a matter of time before politics came up. It's a burning topic here. Everyone has an opinion. What is Puerto Rico? It's been 116 years since the Spanish-American War left Puerto Rico in American control. We still don't quite know what it all means. Well, it's a beautiful island in the Caribbean. It is. Everywhere we go, we're very proud to say we're Puerto Ricans. Mm -hmm. It's also uh, part of the United States. We're U.S. citizens, and we're very proud of our part U.S. Part of the United citizens. States. For you, it's part of the United States. Puerto yeah, we're a colony. Valerie Rodriguez is a lawyer and very much involved in the island's political scene. She favors statehood. Others have a more nuanced answer. I, I think Puerto Rico's family, I think Puerto Rico's hope, I think Puerto Rico is, is the place that we call home. Manuel Natal is the youngest legislator serving in Puerto Rico's House of Representatives. He's 27 years old and a member of the popular Democratic Party. She said it's part of the United States. How about for you? I refer to Puerto Rico as a nation. It has its own identity that is completely different from that of the United States. Puerto Ricans have had a U.S. citizenship since 1917, but they don't have full rights. Take presidential elections, for instance. If a Puerto Rican is on the island during a presidential election, he or she cannot vote to elect the president. But if that same person happens to be in the United States, they can vote. In other words, the status of Puerto Rico is a complicated issue, really complicated. How about you, Adrian? Well, I agree with most of the things that they said, except for the thing that we are part of the United States. The Supreme Court of the United States decided a long time ago that we belong to the United States, but we're not part of them. Adrian Gonzalez is a third-generation independent. He believes in complete 
independence. When you belong to another country, that's the definition of a colony. The fact is that when you land in Puerto Rico, you actually feel that you're in a different nation, very different from the mainland, the US. If you had the opportunity to decide whatever you want, whatever destiny for this island, you would think that it should be an independent country. Of course. The independence will give us the opportunity to uh, come out of the crisis that we are right now. We are destined to be a, a ghetto, and that is recognized by... That's really the strong. Federal government. It is. Many people in this island of 3.7 million would like Puerto Rico to become the 51st state. But if they reach consensus, they need the U.S. Congress to agree and sanction a plan. But no one in Washington is in a hurry. The beauty of this is that while we discuss this, the people of Puerto Rico voted. November 6, 2012, the people of Puerto Rico, 54% of them rejected the current colonial status. That is true, right? And 61% oh, yeah. voted for statehood. That is not correct. That, that is, is correct. Not. That is it, correct. It's, it's fantastic because it's one idea, something happened, and each one of you had a different idea, which is... Yeah. Well, statehood didn't win. Statehood had the 41%, but when you uh, got the sum of the other votes, it, it, it was an, uh, so, an so absolute you're saying majority. that statehood won, you're no. saying statehood didn't win, and you're saying... Oh, of course it didn't win. To say that if you sum up the other alternative against statehood, statehood law, that is the most ridiculous and preposterous argument I've Absolutely. ever heard. The political debate lived up to its building. But back to the facts. Hawaii was the last territory to become a state. In 1959, 94% of Hawaiians voted for statehood. Only 61% of Puerto Ricans favored statehood two years ago during the last non-Biden referendum called a plebiscite. Simply put, this issue is far from over. We've had a bunch of plebiscites, but this so the last one, it was the people, and you can do it tomorrow. They're gonna keep voting in favor of statehood because the colony has failed. You, you can agree on the basics about your own island. Which yeah, no, the basic no, here is that the colony was declined. Yeah, we can agree on the colony. 54% rejected the, the actual status. territorial and status. And I think there's no debate about that. But they rejected what you believe in. Well, no. no. There's a fraction within my party, which is the one that I belong to, that, that thinks Puerto Rico should have a, a, equal, a relationship more of equals with the United States. Let's suppose that something happens and you were chosen, or you, or you, to be the next governor of Puerto Rico. What would you do? The first thing I'll do is, is get people to believe in ourselves. The second thing is, with that, uh, we need to invest in our people. I have to start with the status, and, and, and it's important because our status, our colonial status, that democratic deficit permeates in all aspects of our lives. Well, first of all, we need a tax reform. Here, like Manuel said, the economy is based on foreign uh, exploitation of our economy. We don't produce anything. And having a U.S. passport makes it easy to leave. About 5 million Puerto Ricans live in the U.S., compared to 3.7 million that reside on the island. So 45,000 Puerto Ricans, like you, decide to leave the island every year. Why? And, and why are you staying here? Why aren't you over there? Well, it's, it's very simple. We're the number one in unemployment rate in the United States. We're 14.1% in unemployment. People graduate in Puerto Rico, they don't find a job. But still, you we came are, back. You, yeah, you, you think, studied over there, and then you came back. No, because I think it's an issue of our generation. We inherited this. But why are they staying? Why well, I mean, the, the 5 million the no, most, Mostly our employment. Uh, it has to do a lot of, with uh, our, the violence in, in Puerto Rico, and that it's... Uh, I guess an effect of, of the, the lack of Four opportunity. Four times as violent as the oh, U.S. sometimes. Of course, no? and, and when you see the population that is being more affected by that, 20 years old is the average age of the people that are leaving, the Puerto Ricans that are leaving the island to go somewhere else to try their luck. 20-something, uh, 20 28 years old is the people that are dying in the street as a product of the violence. So the most affected group or generation right now in Puerto Rico by the problems, it's us.